Hey, what's going on guys? If you haven't watched my full in-depth review of the Obsbot Tail Air, I recommend you check that out. It's gonna be up here somewhere. In that video, I go fully in-depth into the awesome like AI tracking features and the pan tilt zoom function and using the remote and all of the basic video features of the Tail Airs. But in this video, I'm gonna go over setting up a multi-cam live stream with two of these using the Obsbot Live app and just showing you how easy that is, how everything works in the app, just diving a little bit in-depth into the live stream specific stuff. So let's go ahead and do it. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn on the two tail air cameras that we're gonna use here. Okay, there we go. I put a number on this tail air that says one and this other one says two. So I'm gonna set number one over here and number two over here. So then I'm gonna open up the Obsbot Live app. For the most part, I'm gonna be streaming to a place like YouTube. So I'm gonna hit platform streaming and I never really wanna do a vertical stream. So I'm gonna hit landscape. And then once I get to this screen, because I've already turned on the Tail Air cameras, they automatically pop up here. And do note that Tail Air 1 and Tail Air 2, those are custom names that I set within the app beforehand. I think it says Tail Air something and a bunch of numbers uh, by default. Just for ease of use, I did the names corresponding to the ones that I have taped. So one is one and two is two. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add tail air one and two to the stream. And then also you can choose to add your phone front camera or rear camera if you wanted to do an additional shot with your phone because the stream is running through your phone anyway. You have the option to, to add those on. I'm not gonna do that, but that is what that means. So now that I have my camera selected, I'm gonna hit start using and it'll take me to the next step. And this is like a preliminary menu before you get into the main menu. This just shows you what video inputs that you have. So I have my Tail Air 1 and Tail Air 2. Under here you have this PIP that stands for picture in picture. So you have the option to turn one of these canvases on. You can see that it has both of my two camera angles in a single frame. So say if I wanted this canvas 3, I would select that and then I can hit the options menu to actually add a background. So it's not just a black background behind there and you can add your own custom background so you could make it on brand for, you know, if you're doing a professional shoot for a business or something. So I'm actually gonna leave that picture in picture there. And then here you have transitions. So this is kind of an all or nothing situation. You can either have it hard cut back and forth between your camera angles or you can select like a fade in and fade out. So then every time that you're changing your camera angle to these two angles or you're going to the picture in picture it would do this fade effect that's the only one that i find to be usable there's also directional dr like this i wouldn't want on every single uh, transition or like this is ridiculous like who would want this on their live stream i personally would probably just do nothing and just do hard cut between the two camera angles but you have that option there but once you have it set it's going to do that for the whole stream and i don't believe there's a way to turn it off without backing completely out of the stream and probably stopping it so i'm going to do no transitions and then at the bottom here we have the mixer so you can see the inputs uh from tail air one and tail air two with their onboard microphones what they're hearing you can see that it's at a good level. Obviously, you probably wouldn't want to use camera audio for your stream. These do have 3.5 millimeter microphone jacks on both of the tail air cameras. So you can plug in an actual microphone, a lav mic to your speaker, or even just a shotgun mic for ambient room tone. And then you also have the ability to monitor here. I'm gonna show this, uh, this mixer settings a little bit later, but uh, those are kind of the preliminary setup features. And then once you have that all in a place that you like, you hit next step and it's going to rotate the screen because I hit a horizontal stream. And this is what I'm going to see whenever I'm operating my stream. So I can switch back and forth between my different video sources. And then I also have the, the dual input source that I chose. So now if I go to a shot and say, I want to make this shot look brighter, or I want to adjust the framing or something, I'm going to hit the little gear icon on that. And it's going to focus just in on this shot. So I can hit this icon here to move around the camera with the pan tilt zoom function and I also have the the remote right here which I should show you how to connect let me just back out super quick and then I scroll up and I'm just gonna flick on the remote control and open up this menu right here hit connect and it should look for the remote it automatically found it connect bam the remote is connected it's that it's that easy <laughs> this is an optional remote this doesn't automatically come with an obsbot tail air if you buy it everything that you can do on this remote for the most part you can do in the app itself but it is nice to have something that you don't need to dive into the menu but i'm going to show you both ways of doing it so like i said i can move the the camera around in the menu like this or i can do the same using the remote control i can also zoom in and out on the side here you can see what magnification the zoom is on 
Same thing with the zoom rocker on the side of the remote. Only in the app and not on the remote, you can adjust how fast or slow the gimbal responds to uh, your movements. Right to the right of that gimbal icon, if I hit that, it's just gonna set the camera up on a straightforward angle from when it first starts. So that is where it wants to be looking ahead and you can turn left and right from there. And then my favorite thing that I kind of covered in the last video, but I'll cover it here again, is the points. So you can automatically set a couple different spots that you want the camera to look at by default, instead of having to uh, use the joystick or the app to move the camera to those two different places you can just set them and hit a button and it'll go straight there say i want to set a point over here by my guitars i can do it on the remote by hitting p1 and just holding that down and it should set the point or i can also just go ahead and hold p1 in the app and update so that is now point one i can set the camera to go look straight ahead by hitting the straight ahead button and now when i hit point one it'll go over to there and then uh this looks a little off kilter there we go. Um, I'm gonna move point two over here. I'm even gonna zoom it in So uh, with the remote here. So I'm gonna set this as point two in the app. I'm gonna update that. So now when I hit point one, it's gonna go straight back there and it's gonna know that it's zoomed out for that one and I hit point two, it's gonna go straight to me. And the same thing works if I just hit point one or two on the remote. It, once you have these set, it is super nice, and uh, I think this is a great feature, to be honest. And then finally, we have the AI tracking features, which you can just hit the little person button, and it'll automatically start tracking. You see, even put a box around me, um, and let me turn that back off. But you do the same thing in the app as well. With this, you just draw a box around your subject, and it's going to start AI tracking me around, which is great. Now I have these this more in-depth menu. You can't go this in-depth with the remote, but I can um, set this and knows that it's person tracking right now I can have it be a wide shot and I just hit a button and it'll automatically frame autumn so auto frame is kind of if I move farther away it should zoom in to keep me generally in the same size in the frame and when I come closer to the camera it's gonna zoom out so if I move back here in auto mode it should zoom in look at this <laughs> it's like a movie other cool thing that I like is so I have it set to person tracking right now. See, I feel like it's giving me a, too much headroom so I can actually adjust it so it's not gonna want to frame me so low. It'll If I set the eye line like this, that's actually framed a lot better in my opinion. So I can set it so when it's AI tracking, it will frame me a certain way without too much headroom because by default it wants to put me right in the center of the frame. I want the eye line to be above center of the frame but still have some headroom and maybe a little bit of nose room. So I might move this bar like that so I'm looking out and this is kind of custom designed to this shot. But if you're setting up for a live stream, you could have this amount of detail into how you set up the AI tracking and you know without having to bring another camera operator along, it's gonna keep your subject framed in that way for the duration of that stream if you set it up this way. And then finally, you can go ahead and set the exposure for your camera manually. So I think I have it set pretty good right now. So it goes all the way down to ISO 100. And if you're in a dark situation, you can crank it up. You can crank it up all the way to 6400. That's way too bright for in here, but it does really well in low light because these have a prime lens, F1.8 aperture, and a relatively large sensor for the kind of camera that it is. There are magnetic ND filters, so say if you're filming outside on a sunny day, you can get the optional ND filters, or you can just crank up the shutter speed if you're okay with sort of jittery looking footage. But uh, I have the shutter speed set to 1 50th. You can do that for both cameras. That's just an in-depth look on the one camera. I'm not gonna do that for the other one, of course. So those are my two three camera angles with the picture in picture. So if I hit the home button there on the top left, that'll just take me back out to the previous like preliminary menu settings. If I hit this button right here, this is gonna show me what's on the cameras. So this is like footage from my last review and this is a acapella concert that I filmed with the tail air or I guess live streamed. And then this is the other camera, like the unboxing and out in the woods testing the camera. So that's just so you can view what is actually on the micro SD cards in the cameras. The next there's this effects menu, which to me, this is like, I think something they could just remove from the app. I'm gonna go ahead, if I hold this button here, it's gonna film on the cameras. I'm just gonna turn on these beauty effects. I'm gonna go to my main angle here um, in this camera so I can like smooth out my skin tones and modify how my face looks. I, I don't I don't know why there this is in here. I can add makeup to myself. Let me see. 
I got some lipstick on now. <laughs> it added, it's adding AI lipstick to my face at the moment. Those beauty filters and stuff, I think those can just be removed from the app. I don't see many people using those, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm just definitely not the target audience, I suppose. And then we have the mixer here. I will note, this is a big thing. I did a test stream and I would definitely recommend if you're gonna purchase a tail air or any live stream equipment, that you do a test stream with it before you actually try to use it. And when I did a test stream, I didn't realize that the mobile audio here off to the right was checked on. In addition to the tail air internal microphone, Phones, it was adding the my phone microphone and it was adding an echo to the entire stream I couldn't figure out what was wrong So you're gonna want to go into the mixer here and disable the phone audio Maybe even also turn it down in case it accidentally gets turned on I would recommend running a microphone directly into one of your tail airs and then turning off the other one's audio source So say if I put a microphone into tail air 2 and I wanted it to focus on that I would set that to always open and then I would turn the other one to always closed. So it would only be listening to the audio from that camera, regardless of which camera it switches around to, because there's also an option for always follow video. And if you have it set to that, whichever camera is switched to at that moment, it'll switch to that camera's microphone. So there might be some situations where that is useful, but you kind of have all of the different options. For the most part, I'm probably gonna be running the, uh, the audio through a single camera and ignoring the other camera's audio, but that always follow video option Option could be useful for certain kinds of streams. And then finally at the bottom here you have the stickers layer and this is where you can add text you can type out thing like if you were doing a show and you wanted it to be like intermission 10 minutes I don't know so then it's gonna add that as a sticker I can add that onto the stream say if I left the screen I also have the ability to edit it to different colors maybe that's not the best example of what you can do with it but that is something you can do with the text I'm going to delete that sticker you can also import images and even gifs apparently main thing I think would be useful is the ability to import images so if you were filming a keynote speaker and you had the wide shot with a little bit of audience in it and you had the other side shot that's more focused on him, maybe it's AI tracking him around, and then say he was referring to a PowerPoint, you could import the PowerPoint slides and then you could have it cut to those actual slides he's talking about and then back to the camera angles. You could have that fully integrated into the stream in through this mobile app. And that's the basic overview of this app. You can hold down the red button there at the bottom. You can choose your output source. You even have RTMP if you want to output the live stream to multiple platforms but for the most part I'd be going to YouTube signing into my YouTube account you can set the resolution you can name the live stream and add a description and all those things by signing into your Google account and then you just hit the start button to go live and uh, while you're live you also can do what I've already done I'm going to turn off these cameras actually but I just turned them off. But if you hit that button above the live stream button, you can also internally record in the OBSBOT tail air cameras up to 4K resolution. So on top of your actual stream output, you can get the raw footage from the cameras themselves. And then you can edit like a highlight reel uh, or do whatever you want to do a high quality version of that same footage in 4K resolution. If you're running through an actual camera through OBS studios and you're outputting to the source and it would be a lot more complicated to take a lot more knowledge, but OBSBOT with their tail air cameras and their OBSBOT live app, they really made it a lot more simple to understand even for a person like me who is not super live stream savvy. There's a lot that I don't know about live streams, but this app was almost plug and play with my surface level knowledge. Everything made sense and uh, it's just very easy to connect the cameras. It's easy to understand what the features are, easy to use the remote. The AI tracking is not difficult. It's just really easy, I guess is what I would say. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and leave a comment down below. If you haven't already, check out the full OBSBOT tail air review video that I go more in depth into the features and just the cool other aspects of the camera outside of specifically live streaming. And I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.